Good morning. Came to talk to you uh, this morning about forgetting to pray for help with a problem. This past few weeks uh, occurred to me that I was getting in terrible shape with my character. I was fighting with him, snapping and snarling to the point that I was upsetting myself. And I'd go home and be so frustrated and all of a sudden, you see, he is my creative partner. He helped me with creating the idea of these videos and he bought a lot of the equipment to do it and um, so I needed to be able to work with him. And he was the one that I was snapping at. So I went home, oh, it's been a few days, and thought, my word, I have not been praying for help. I have got to do something. So I, that very night, I prayed for help. In, you may, you may kiss my hand. Kiss. <laughs> in, in getting along with him. And he, my... he didn't realize it, but when I came down the next day, I was much better. I didn't snap and snarl at him. I, in fact, I was able to take a, you know, a more uh, mature, charitable or... More mature attitude. <laughs> well, you might call it that. Um, well, I, I don't know what to call it. And it worked better with my video, and uh, I thought, well, that's the answer. So every night, if I got to pray for help, because otherwise I'd look on him as the end stages, and it would just be practically, and you know, I was beginning to think it was going, to, it was intolerable, but I. So every night I've been praying, and praying, it's like you ask a higher power, God, mm -hmm. to tell you the right way to help you to have the attitude that's going to be the least destructive for you and for him. And uh, I've been pretty confident ever since that I can get this help. And you know, I've uh, been uh, in the business of protesting abortion for many years, and and I'd always pray for help. Pray every every morning when I got up, I'd pray. Well, what would be the thing that I need to do? That's how I got into it because the would, answer would always come. This is what you need to do, if if you really want to help. And it would be writing protest letters, uh, trying to educate the public, trying to get them more aware of the consequences of what they're doing. And uh, then I hooked up with a group uh, called 40 Days to Life, and they did a lot of praying. And I get emails every day nearly from, I do get them, I have done for quite some time, getting these emails and they would all be praying and, they, and their, prayer, uh, their uh, protest was in the form of prayer vigils at the abortion clinics. And uh, so I just sort of took it that their prayers were my prayers, even though I wasn't going to the abortion clinics and I wasn't doing that kind of protesting. And this is how I think I got clear off the track of asking for help myself every day and got into trouble uh, getting, you know, fighting with him too much, becoming very irritated uh, with what he says or does, you know, with the idea that he's drinking and it's affecting his mind and this is very annoying and uh, so uh, and again, I was reminded of when I used to pray all the time to how to help my dad, who was an alcoholic, reminds me very much of him. Oh, and, no, uh, wait, wait a minute now. 
No. Now, now, quite frankly, I've seen pictures of your dad, all right? A much better looking man. Oh, well, he is a better looking, but... Uh, Notice I shaved, <laughs> folks. I, I've lost that beard. I don't look like Gabby Hayes anymore. I look like Roy <laughs> Rogers' horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, uh, and the idea was, so many times I think I get on the defensive of having a partner who is an alcoholic, as because I know so many people think, get away from that guy. Uh, you're enabling him, you're doing this to him, you're doing that to him. And I'd, I'd have to ask myself, well, why? Why has he become my best friend in spite? Well, my dad was my best friend. He was my protector when I was young. I could count on him to understand how I thought, and I count on him for the same. Uh, my dad was very valuable to me, and that was one reason why I was in such a panic about him dying because I would lose my, my understanding friend because I'd inherited, really, actually, I thought his mind, I inherited his rather than my mother's. My mother didn't understand me. And I thought she won't be any help at all if he dies because he understands why, how I think the way I do. I'm not, I'm so, not sure uh, your mother understood sex. <laughs> Oh, don't move. She understood sex. She liked sex, all right. But, but she didn't like but, anything but, after sex. Uh, like, but anyway, another I, uh, kid. I've had to be another patient. Another daughter. And another thing developed that. Another really, daughter. Uh, yeah, right. Another daughter. <laughs> another daughter. Another Especially daughter. Especially the oldest one who I, got I along better with the father that, than you know? with the mother. That was. Mm. And, uh, and I could also understand my dad's thinking better than my mother could, and that was another, another source of, uh, of contention because she, she was resented that and always said that I was his favorite, and uh, obviously she wasn't. He, I was. <laughs> I thought, oh, oh, boy, that's bad. But then another thing has come up uh, that upset me, too, that I wanted to mention. Mm -hmm. uh, my 40 Days to Life people, they notified me just a couple of days ago that Planned Parenthood uh, at their abortion clinics was now initiating a 40, uh, a prayer, 40 days of prayer for, you know, their purposes, which would be for a safe abortion, for the spiritual strength to get an abortion. Well. Oh, this is pretty disturbing stuff, but it shows that Planned Parenthood is becoming very upset with the success of the prayer vigils. And so they they feel like they're being besieged again Ooh. on the subject of abortion. Who feels that way? Planned Parenthood, the, the abortion provider. So they have initiated a 40 days of prayer and I thought, oh, I had to pray about this. I thought, oh God, uh, how how can people pray for something that is basically wrong in the first place to take life? And uh, but when, this when goes to show that, that in any more. in any institution in in churches in you know when was the last time you went to church? Uh, I don't go to church, and this is why, because. I feel like that when you pray for help, and this was, it started with my father, when I prayed for help, uh, in the churches I felt that there was no, there was no uh, desire to help him. They'd given up on the alcoholic. Mormons have the word of wisdom, and they just sort of begin to take for granted that their people who are active in word Mormonism are not going book. to drink. What is word this of is one of the strongest group of people there is as far as substance abuse is concerned because they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't even drink coffee, you're not supposed to. And they just like to pork and, a lot uh, of kids, right? And so they, as a result, there's a lot of them that just don't have any patience at all with the alcoholic because they just figure, well, if you would just uh, keep the word of wisdom, wouldn't be drinking. You didn't rebel against the church. What is the word of wisdom? The word of wisdom is what me. is good for the famous 
and justifiably so, word of wisdom of Mormons. Why do you think all these young Mormon missionaries are going around so clean cut, never drink, never smoke, don't have, you know, because they've been raised with that tradition of never, well, they've, they've never been, drinking. They've been mentally challenged. Uh, I'm going to ignore that. <laughs> and um, my father, uh, I uh, to get he a rebelled on that one. against Ow. this. And he got into drinking when he was just a ch He was probably an alcoholic in his teen, in How childhood. You know? As I know his history. And uh, I know the history of many of those young rebels up there. He was uh, a uh, very, boy. very early drinking. You sit on And, a, uh, you know, hey, but let me tell you this. I'm tell Among you. the ranchers who were good Mormons, kept the word of wisdom, they usually have a large what family. This word of they wisdom all of would time? not. They would not uh, break the word of wisdom. They would help each other. But my dad didn't have that many brothers, and he and I, but he and his brothers did get into the drinking. There were a lot of reasons why. I think even though my dad had a very religious mother who kept the word of wisdom, right, and religious sisters, he broke what the word of, wisdom word of wisdom you because say? his father was not a Mormon. And he didn't drink, he had vowed not to drink because his dad had uh, drank and uh, he, as a result he had to help take care of his mother for the rest of her days because the dad died younger and so on. He had reasons why he well, vowed, but it, it, didn't, it didn't seem to affect uh, my dad and his brothers. The good die young, is it? Uh, so anyway, uh, there's there's this idea that uh, that was he worth? Was he worth? He was my father. He was valuable to me, and my counseling uh, through prayer was that even though he was he he would actually sober up for long periods of time. During that time, we had the chance to affect him. We had the chance Who's to we? reinforce me, my, me and my sisters. We had the chance by treating him well, by interacting with him, we had the chance to strengthen his character. What if he was so worth a million dollars? Uh, well, we didn't have any idea he was worth that at yeah, all. Right. See, see, I have to ignore his remarks. You know, uh, he is. He's drinking, so he ha gives me a few snide remarks, but it's best that if I just ignore them. Uh, well, I'm impressed. Usually you hit me. <laughs> well, yeah, usually I have a flare of temper, and but if if I allowed it to distract me, I'd get off the course. And But anyway, when I'd go to church, I would always listen to the to the preachers, and I would decide whether they were really sincere really sincere in trying to connect to to God and help, or they were just, uh, because it's easy for people in the church to become uh, sort of disconnected from yeah, the source. From, uh, yeah. God would always ask people for something difficult or hard. And yeah. I think, because that's reality. That is how you it's you don't right. you don't uh, keep a community uh, on the up and up, and it's very difficult. Why do communities keep and, killing uh, each other and on so, a regular uh, basis? And so uh, they would. Uh, and the, to me, this is how churches they become complacent. Uh, they don't want to keep telling their uh, something that they don't want to hear. They want to tell them what they want to hear. And so I'd go to church uh, with my dedication, with my idea that alcoholics needed to be, and I'd be expressing myself and cause consternation. Uh, it was just like the ch a church can get so uh, averse to having controversy that they they kind of veer away from the hard minutes. path Two and minutes. take the easy path. It's easy. It's easy to get off the hard path. And now we've got a nation, we have a, we have a nation where people uh, don't see anything wrong with the idea of praying uh, in connection to the death of 
your own child that you helped create. And that's a pretty horrifying thought, but it's easy for it to happen one step at a time. A law can get passed that's basically wrong, and it's too hard to, to oppose it. It's too hard to resist it. So it appears to be too hard. And so people don't do it. They go along with it. And this is how laws that are against, and if we look at them and we think about them, we know that they're against uh, the principles that, we, that we've been taught that relate to You mean what, you were taught up in Southern uh, Utah. And, uh, well, no God is going to preach, you know, the idea that I shall not kill is a very strong teaching and it's you not likely to be the Old Testament. Vengeance it's, is it's mine, not the like Lord. It, I, I know, it's evolved. It's evolved more and more. You and now we Testament find ourselves one, we have slipped back. Book. We have slipped back into the into the dark ages because due to the advancement of our uh, ways of saving people like uh, we don't have the plague anymore, we don't, you know, and we've got antibiotics, we live longer, therefore, and, and especially women, women live a lot longer. They can get through childbirth, and they can have another and another. Well, then the temptation for abortion became almost overpowering. So that is what we fell back into. We took our great uh, inventions and used them to what? Slip back know. by killing a whole bunch of children. Now, this is not humane. This is not, and we've got to find a way to do, to control ourselves, control our sex drives, so that we don't have these children, we don't conceive children that we want, we're going to want to do away with. We don't do that, but for us to get to that point now, we're going up a very slippery slope, you know, making a little progress, falling back. Mm -hmm. And so I've been involved with that, and I've also been involved in my struggle to support, not alcoholism, but alcoholics, <laughs> in the hope, because this is what you the message bought, to, to me was. This never bought me one as fear long, in her life. As long Nothing as he has accepted. life, breath, he can be affected by what I say, even though he acts like he's not. He can be affected even by the fact that I've continued to have patience with him. I know. Have not deserted I, him. I think, I think have not. and Dotage are great. <laughs> yeah. I really. And, love it. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's even called me I'm senile a, because I'm I am. I'm for Alzheimer's suggesting. myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He doesn't understand far, why I haven't deserted him. Well, that probably means that... I never that understood. What do you mean I understood it? And listen, there is progress. You know, I tried for five years to get him to wash his dishes at night. Guess mm -hmm. what? He is now washing his dishes at night. Partly because of me continuing to tell him that's what he needed to do to, to get down his roach. He had to stop feeding him at night. He didn't know it, but he was feeding thousands of them at night when he was asleep. He had he to clean out his sink. He was feeding them during the day, too, you know. Yes. He had to clean out Jeez. his sink so they, they couldn't... They had to eat. They had nothing to eat. And he's finding out that, yes, that's true. Uh, when he became afraid that his roaches might get him a consequence he didn't want, you know. Like what? Eviction. No, <laughs> so. I heard the other day... Oh yes, they will evict someone. They have, ev they will evict you if you just let all holes grow and expect your alcoholism to be accepted by management, including a big drop in your housekeeping abilities. Well, I didn't want him to be evicted, so I, I kept telling him over and over, and I don't want to be evicted myself, so I'm getting a housekeeper to help me. So I'm, it's I'm, not uh, me. I have uh, my, oh, my. Man. Energy has slipped in my age, aging, and I need some help, just like he needed help. So I'm continuing to help him, even if he doesn't indicate that he wants to be helped.
Now you're in overtime. Bye. Okay. So bye and thanks a lot. I hope this will prove helpful to you too. I'm praying myself. If you have a drinker. I pray, I pray for all of you. <laughs>